if we were in class, we would do an experiment set up like the one that's on the board, where we've got two things that are called light gates that are basically sensors that are connected up to a timing device, a toy car with a piece of card on the top that's a certain length, usually four or five centimetres. The car then gets pushed down the ramp, goes through this light gate, goes through the next light gate. What the, like the way we've got it, so we'd have it set up on the timer, is that it would time how long it takes to get from this one to this one. We would also know how far apart these light gates are. What we can then do is you work out the average speed, so the average speed across the whole journey. To work out average speed, we know that it's distance divided by time. So the distance would be the distance between the light gates. And the time would be the time between the two light gates. So that would be the, the distance of essentially the whole journey and the time for the whole journey. And from that, we can work out the average speed, just the same as what you were doing last week. But when a car is going down a ramp, it's not going at the same speed all the time. It's going to start off slow and it's going to gradually speed up as it goes down the ramp. It doesn't always have the same speed. And that's the same for any journey. A car, a bike, a person, whatever it is, doesn't have the same speed for the whole journey. The speed will change. So what we can also work out is something called instantaneous speed. And instantaneous speed is the speed at any one particular point on a journey. So if you've been in, out in a car, you'll have probably seen when you go into a town, uh, there's often the speed cameras that flash up, either flash just to say that you're going too fast or they flash the specific speed that you're doing. They're measuring the speed that you're doing at that point in time, which is instantaneous speed. Instantaneous speed needs to be measured over a very, very short period of time and a very short distance. And we do that with the same sort of setup, but just slightly different. Now this is how we measure instantaneous speed. So this time, what we do is we've got our car with our piece of card on the top, and this piece of card says four centimetres, or whatever it is. This time we just have one light gate, and that one light gate is set up, the timer device knows how wide this piece of card is. So rather than knowing the distance between the two light gates in the first one, it knows just how wide this piece of card is. And then we just do the same again, let the car roll down the ramp, but this time the light gate just times how long it takes for this little piece of card to go past the sensor. So it's recorded over a very short distance and a very short time, less than a second normally. So this time the instantaneous speed is the length, so that's still a distance, the length of the card, which is sometimes called a mask, so the length of the card, divided by the time through the light gate. Okay, so you only need to have one light gate. Now you'll sometimes see it drawn like the first one, and it might ask you how to work out the instantaneous speed at the top or at the bottom, in which case you would say it was just the time between the top light gate or the time through the bottom light gate. So the instantaneous speed is the speed at any particular point on the ramp. So as it's going through here. So you need to know the distance it's traveled in that short time, which is just the length of the piece of card, because that's the bit that's going through the sensor and the time it took for it to do that. So we can't really do this at home, obviously. I can't do it at home either, but what I have done is I've set up a car on a ramp and I've filmed it in slow-mo going between two points and taken some screenshots of it at those points and used with the stopwatch um, so that you can see, get the idea of how that works. Three, two, one, go. Three, two, one. Two, one, go.